Hi folks, good to see everybody. Thanks for coming all this way to uh, sunny Nottingham. A few late arrivals coming in, but that's all right. We're waiting outside, try to Stack them all in. We've got a full house here today. So uh, we've got Paul Sawyer, uh, uh, who's in charge of all he sees in the studio, and our marketing department as well. And I'm John, and I'm the MD of Warlord Games. Uh, we've been around for 15 years, for those who don't know. Both X Games Workshop people, as are quite a number of our uh, staff, and uh, all based down in the lead belt in sunny Nottingham. So, uh, welcome to anybody who's watching the uh, film as well. So, it's a Q&A covering pretty much everything. Is that correct? As yeah, you said. yeah. I mean, it really is just a case of what do you guys want to know. Uh, Originally, it was going to be a, an epic. Uh, uh, Q&A, but we've kind of opened it out a bit to, to cover all the things that you might wish to. We will be making an announcement on a, uh, a new game. Yes, we will. We'll do that a little later on, maybe as a segue, halfway through the, uh, the seminar. So um, if we can go for um, hands up, and if you could ask your question as loudly as possible so that it picks up on the camera. Oh, more coming through. Come on down, there's plenty of space down here. <laughs> right, well, there's one, one hand over there. Can you speak up? So the question, question being, um, Warlord, get, Warlord for boys in the 80s has a similar logo and um, is there any correlation between Warlord Games and the comic? There's no direct correlation, but we grew up reading Warlord and Battle, Commando comics, War Action Library, all of those kind of things. Uh, and when we were thinking about uh, what we wanted to call the business, we came with a number of ideas and when it, we kind of hit on Warlord, and the natural thing to do would be to look at a similar logo that paid homage to a comic that we loved. Um, and I think we're pretty happy with it, aren't we, John? Uh, he stole it. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's going to prison? <laughs> they haven't written to us yet. <laughs> So I think after 14 years they might have forgotten. But it's a good name and uh, a great retro. Um, that was the idea. It was a retro logo. Yeah. Well, in the Napoleonic period, are you planning to do an 1813 edition for, uh, for Black, Black Powder? powder? Over to you. Question being that, uh, are we going to do an 1813 supplement for Black Powder? Uh, absolutely. It's been written by Eddie McWalter already. Are we feeling better today, AD? He can't be here today. Um, so yes, it, it's been written. It's in the process of editing and preparation. So you should say that in, in coming months. And also on the epic, Waterloo, are you planning to expand the British Empire and the British Isles and the British Isles with Dutch Belgians, the Nassau Rodgers? Cool. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> uh, no intention to making uh, uh, Belgians because you just paint the British. So they're so close in, in that scale. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't countenance spending £25,000 on a mould to make Belgians who look exactly like the British. So uh, uh, Brunswickers would be neat because they look quite a bit different. Uh, uh, various militias in the stovepipes. I know there's people who are looking for that. Uh, what we're going to try and do is experiment a little more with the um, the new Wonder resin we're using to see if we can get strips made of that. Because tooling up in plastic, as you know, is very expensive for... I shouldn't call them the lesser troops. I'll do that for you with a caveat. Yeah, for the lesser popular troops. Um, but there are a lot, as you know, of, of militias at Waterloo, and it would be nice to show them. If we do them, we'd more likely do them in resin strips. So, we, so the investment would not be too crippling for us. I heard John hates Belgians. <laughs> <laughs> Chap at the back. Yeah. When we're going to see more stuff from French, so stuff like Mac 50 or the plastic French infantry side, because we know that's happening at some point, it's asking enough. And we're going to see more stuff from Samurai, quite sure. 
Right, so the qu question being that you want to see more for Bolt Action French and also Samurai uh, for Pike and Shot. Um, yeah, absolutely we want to do more for the French. Uh, it's, a, it's a question that most people ask is what, what are you going to do for my army? Uh, and we do quite a lot of armies for a lot of systems, so it, you know, it comes in fits and starts. Um, John asked me fairly recently, when are we going to see plastic French? So that's certainly high on our list to do. Um, it's a natural thing. We've already got the Blitzkrieg Germans. Yeah, will we see plastic BEF? Yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't you? Um, so yeah, we, we certainly want to do more for the French. Um, in terms of um, Pike and Shot Samurai, um, we have a book being written at the moment on the Jendoku Sudai, which I've probably completely massacred the pronunciation of. Say it of. again, go. Uh, feudal Japan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's being written at the moment um, and is looking very good. Uh, and naturally we'll want to fill out some of the, some of the gaps. Also, chap at the back. Um, So the question is, uh, what was John's lockdown project? My lockdown project was doing a Russian Napoleonic army and then finishing off my Indo-Pakistani war 1967, a little bit niche, <laughs> but I just got quite obsessed with it and I haven't finished with it yet. The more I read about the 67 Pakistan-Indian war is more exciting, I, 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 I just can't help myself. Um, nurse! Nurse! <laughs> it's a fascinating period. And the good news is you can use a lot of your, mostly it's your World War II collections you can add in there and then just add going from there. So it's a. Uh, uh, that's probably not going to go anywhere, I don't think, but it's satisfied my, myself and uh, occupied many hours of my time. It consolidated the German uh, for the uh, Bolt is there any chance to do all the other armies? So it's one book rather than having about five books for the British, about four books for the Americans. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. The rest of the are in different books. Is there any chance of actually getting all in one book? Uh, well, we're certainly going to be looking at how we handle bolt action going forwards. I mean, naturally, once you know a first edition comes out, the, nat the first thing you do is start working on the second edition. We've got a second edition. You know, work on the, the following edition in some form always happens. Um, so yeah, how we handle things with theatre books, campaign book, armies of books, all of that stuff's up for grabs. I think it's a really interesting take on it. Uh, it's certainly one way we could go. You're right, you could get uh, American Airborne and Marines and Americans. You could put them all in one book. It is, it is it's not a terrible idea. It's got to Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, um, as Paul says, we, we will be thinking about doing doing uh, different books. Uh, it'll be a bloody big book. Uh, if you want to pay double the price, then. Um, but it's a good challenge. No, I, th I think the challenge is good. Yeah. Right, uh, I like that. Gentleman at the Shepherd back. Right at the back in the corner. Uh, at the, so your question being, are we going to do more on Sea Lion and Gigant? Um, I don't think there's any hard plans right now in terms of more stuff for that. Um, it's a project that's particularly dear to our hearts at Warlord. We put a lot of effort and uh, had a lot of fun with the various different elements for both of those books. Obviously Gigant was taking Sea Lion and, and taking even further into the what if. Um, but I don't, I don't think we have anything specific planned to fill that one out, no, I'm afraid not. Well, we have, we have Conflict 47, which is uh, we do with Clockwork Goblin, which is all the alternate history, World War II. Um, so I think that's probably where we'd focus most of our effort. Is 
that currently sort of ongoing, and uh, if so, is there a time scale for it? So you'd, you'd, li you'd, like, you'd like to know about the, um, the second book in the um, Italy campaign. Uh, well, I can confirm it's called Tough Old Gut, uh, and it's out next year. It's been written, it's been handed over to Osprey. Uh, we haven't seen the, the layouts and the designs yet, but yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be quite a popular book because mm. it's got some really cool units in it. <laughs> Lots and, uh, of the co-belligerent stuff. Gentleman yellow at the back, brownie yellow. Um, are there any plans to move into the ultra-modern warfare? Uh, so are we going to move into moderns? Well, never say never. Um, uh, we will bound to one day, uh, but it's not. It's not within a year. It's not. It's not on the horizon for a year. I can say that. But I, I'd like to. Um, um, gentleman there. Okay, the, the question here is about the 2000 AD license and uh, what's Paul, because it's Paul's favourite, 2000 AD, they didn't steal the logo. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's the plans, Paul? Um, so, uh, the, with our license we have to make something that isn't Judge Dredd every year, um, which keeps us honest because naturally Judge Dredd is the one that most people um, think of when they think about the 2000 AD um, intellectual property. Um, so you'll, you'll know that we've got the Judge Dredd game out, we've got a, a, a soon to be announced expansion for Judge Dredd coming through which will enhance that particular game. So, so far in terms of the other games we've had Strontium Dog, uh, we've had Slain, you'll have seen as you mentioned there um, the first sculpts of ABC Warriors. It comes down to sales really, um, Strontium Dog I think had kind of had its day um, we'd, we'd sold it very, very well for a number of people, but it, it had become fallow. And there's only so much you can actually do in terms of miniatures for that, that storyline. I think we did pretty much everything, apart from a few random muties. So there wasn't anything else that we could do to keep that one alive as such. Um, so it was a natural thing for us to um, you know, let, let that one have its day and give people a little chance to buy it for the last time. Um, that didn't really have anything to do with Slain coming out. I think it was just a timing thing. So yeah, Slain's done okay, it's done pretty well. Uh, will we do an expansion for Slain? Yeah, extend the time. We might do. Um, but at the moment, the, uh, the the key thing for us right now is developing ABC Warriors and doing more stuff for Dread. Chap okay. at the back in the check shirt. Are you still working on your Doctor Who? So the question being, what is the plans for Doctor Who? Well, to be decided, I think. Yeah. It, uh, again, it's one about it's trying to balance um, so many different games that we have. It's difficult to get the bandwidth of marketing and attention that you can give to everything. Uh, we're both huge. We are both Hoovians of the worst sort. We love it so much. Um, and we've got, some, we've got a few, few nice models to come out, haven't we? Yeah, we've still got plenty of models to come through. To come and through. And we'll start to see those in the next couple of months. And uh, So yeah, well, there'll certainly be new stuff, but uh, it's how much uh, effort we can put into Doctor Who. And uh, working with the BBC is very entertaining. And... Uh, um, um, and... Uh, uh, and great fun. <laughs> yeah, so, fun. That was the word I was looking for. Got it. And, uh, so yeah. let, let's hope we can keep it fun and keep it going. Back band there. Nah, too late. We've got you now. <laughs> um, in, in regards of Black Powder, uh, I think uh, uh, Last Arguments of Kings is a wonderful book. I uh, was wondering if uh, uh, there was any plan for a specific uh, book on the Seven Years War, just like you did for the French in your wars uh, with the recent, uh, with the latest one, uh, if there's like, any plan for the Seven Years War. Oh. So the question being that you want to know about whether we do a Seven Years yeah. War book. Yeah. Uh, we've already had one written. So we have a manuscript. Uh, we don't have a timeline for it. 
and, and naturally one of the, the issues there is we don't have a great miniature range to go alongside it. So when, we de when we're deciding about the books that we want to release, naturally as a business one of the things that we want to do is make sure that we have a book that is supported by miniatures. If we have a book that isn't supported by miniatures it becomes lower priority, but a, a manuscript has been written. It would, would work very well for Epic, wouldn't it? Yes. Just saying. Don't get him started. Just saying. Dear Lord. <laughs> There's a guy down. Chap in the Notts County shirt. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, sorry, yeah, I'm relatively new to, to Bolt Action. But with Bolt Action, um, when you're like, is it just something that strikes you as to which period of history or different types of armies that you want to follow? Or is it, do you have like a set research team that go into groups on it and then go, oh, what about these? So like for the Africa Corps and all the different branches of the armies themselves. So you want to know about what our process is for deciding what we do for Bolt Action? Yes, it is there a, yeah. I'd, lo I'd love to be able to say that it is that that wonderful idea you had that we have a massive research team and we, we have we have focus groups what it actually actually happens is one of us will read a book get excited about it send each other pictures on whatsapp saying oh have you seen this one <laughs> and I, I suppose we're making that then yeah <laughs> so it's excitement more than anything else i mean we, yeah obviously there are natural things that we we want to do and the chap at the back said why haven't you done plastic French yeah and of course we're going to but you've got to hit, have the big hitters first you've got to have you know late war Germans the SS the, the Russians the Americans so you kind of premiership level hey see what I did there <laughs> premiership your premiership level um, plastic sets and then you kind of get into your championship afterwards. In the same way as with the, with the books, ne the natural priority is to do something that supports our miniatures and then you look at other things. So uh, that's generally where we go. Definitely the top sellers is Germans at the top, secondly Americans, third British, fourth Russians, fifth Japanese, probably Time with Italians now, I would have thought with Italian yeah, releases. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Italian there. And uh, so you kind of go from there and uh, and then once we get these plastic French out, that will get the French right up there. I think they'll be a popular item. And then you've got the Poles, you've got the Finns. There's so much more still to do for us. So the, the, there's, there's not going to be any let up in Bolt Action anytime soon. Okay, lady there. Would we do World War One and 28 mil? Uh, well, we very nearly did, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did, yeah. yeah. Uh, when the uh, ver various anniversaries were coming up, and perhaps when, uh, yeah, uh, a few people had a go at it. We, we did sketch it out and worked out a, you know, two plastic, three plastic frames, but um, we just had, uh, we decided then we wouldn't do it. Um, only because we still had so much to go in World War Two, but I would have liked to have done late war uh, World War One because, uh, uh, and we, we nearly published a set of rules for it as well. Yeah, yeah. We Some did. Canadian guys wrote Probably, a fantastic yeah. set of rules, which were really, really good. And uh, I don't know what happened to it in them, but uh, they wrote a wrote a great book. And because uh, those those late war um, battles were very fluid as you know and uh, you know with tanks and aircraft and everything it's a completely different way of fighting you know because those who don't understand the first world war think it's very dull well it's far from dull in that last year of very fluid warfare and very innovative as you know uh, perhaps want to re to revisit I'd, I'd like to revisit it uh, i think it'd be a great a great set to release see now what you've done <laughs> <laughs> follow that can you talk a bit more about the future of the epic line? It's, um, especially in the Napoleonic period, I'm interested to see if you have plans to expand the Peninsular War and the Spanish and Portuguese armies. Sure. Uh, 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 epic Napoleonic. We started, as you know, a year and a half ago with the American Civil War, uh, where we did we just did one mould of infantry, because that was quite cheap and cheerful to do. And that sold really, really, really well. So that whet our appetite for doing proper thing, Napoleonic. Uh, but um, curse Wellington and everybody else in Napoleon, they seem to dress their armies in innumerable different uniforms. So trying to cover all of them is almost impossible. Uh, with, uh, uh, with your injection moulding 
each box, each type costing between 15 and 20,000 pounds. You have to sell a lot of them uh, uh, to, to get any hope of any return. Uh, now, Waterloo's gone very well. It's selling very, really nicely, which is great. Still selling strong. We put out the Imperial Guard Cavalry in resin the other day, and that was lovely. Um, of course, we will do Austrians and Russians in time, because I do understand the world does not revolve around Waterloo. Apparently, some other people were also involved in the Pentagonic <laughs> Wars. Um, I'd certainly like to see British in stovepipe, uh, so you could do Peninsula. Um, then you get sort of sucked in immediately, saying, oh, well, if you're doing the British and stovepipe, you've got to do the French differently as well. You say, well, you don't have to. You know, you can get away with what they are. When we're, we're talking about a different way of gaming with Epic. You know, um, you know I, I think that the button counters in all of us wants it right, but uh, the more detail you put on a model sometimes, it doesn't always help you getting your battalions look nice and, every, and all that. Uh, um, Spanish would be nice, uh, uh, perhaps a mixed sprue of Spanish and Portuguese. It's all about what you can afford to do, because you know, uh, I wish for it all, you know, um, but uh, it'd be tricksy to do Spanish cavalry and Portuguese cavalry as well, because um, I'm not sure their effect was huge in the, in the, in the peninsula, their cavalry. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but certainly their infantry are there and in the tens of thousands and need to be represented, and, and they will be. But it's all about uh, time and money and, and being able to... Paul has a, a certain amount of cash that I give him to spend. If he's really good, he gets the same amount next year each time. <laughs> Pocket money. Pocket money. But he's got to spend it all wisely because if he sticks it all into Epic, then he can't get his favourite World War II freaky stuff that he likes. So... Uh, uh, so, uh, and then Epic as a system, it's gone very well. It's, you know, it's, um, has it surprised us? No, nah, it doesn't surprise me. I knew it was lovely. It's going to be really good. And then we've got to think about what to do next. Uh, do we do more Napoleonics or do we pick another period? Who knows? And um, so, that, is that enough to answer you or not? Or do you want a bit more? Uh, there's a chap at the back again that had his hand up for a long I think we. The, what's the plan with conflict you mentioned? Uh, I think we we covered that earlier on. Um, is that we, we do have plans for it? Um, obviously, at the moment, uh, you know, we're beholden to the guys at Clockwork Goblin who own the own the game and own the IP. So what they design and, and, and let us have is what we uh, release. Um, but I would hope that you know we'd have some some news on conflict in the next yeah. You know, few days and weeks. Oh, we've got big plans for it. It's, it's a great game and uh, there's a lot more to go at with it, I think. Just one there. Are you planning to do Epic French Napoleonic Young Guard? Not this year. Uh, young Guard, I think, my understanding at Waterloo, they're mostly in great coats uh, and didn't look much different. So I, for me, because I'm not a perfectionist, I, I'd have mine in great coats and just have them, uh, have them going in. But uh, one day we'll do them all, and we'll do them posh as well. Yeah, That'd be nice. Uh, looking posh would be well, uh, posh. one of my favourite regiments. They, yeah, they look great, and uh, I would like to do them posh. Just can't do it yet, so have to use the great coats. I'm afraid. I think it's worth. worth yeah, I think John's alluded to already is that with the Epic Waterloo project, we've had 11 plastic frames. And at you know, 15, 20 grand a pop, that's a hell of a lot of investment. It's the most investment we've ever put into a single project. So, you know, with that now out, we've got the Prussians out, and as John mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, we've got the guard cavalry and the, uh, um, the guard artillery. I think for the, um, for the short term, it's about making sure that we can get as many people playing with all of those before we start looking at putting a lot of effort into um, expansion of those or, or new armies uh, or even new periods within Napoleonics. So there's still a hell of a lot. I, mean, I, I can't imagine too many people in the room have already got everything they want for Epic painted and, and on the table. So, <coughs> but if you have, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back to you in a second. There's a uh, chap at the back again. Yeah. Uh, could we see an Epic system for bolt actions more regimental and divisional level engagements in the future, and can we expect to see cross-system 
supplement books. So Norway campaign would be a good one for that, where you've got all the naval side, but you've also got the extensive land campaign and the aerial engagements. Paul? John? Uh, I, the answer's got to be yes to, to those. I think it's exactly what we'd like to do. Um, it's um, the bolt action system and, as you know, World War II. It, we, we're going to mine that vein really seriously. So yes is, is the answer to that. Any chance of doing a bit of Leipzig? Well, it will be. We're going to say we'll get the Austrians and the Russians done. It will all come. Uh, and the Bavarians. No, possibly, possibly there. And the Women's Auxiliary Balloon Corps. Yeah, we yeah. need that. <laughs> <laughs> all in time. Right, blue yeah, all in time. You just have to go for the big hitters. They're like it or not, international history, people want to fight Waterloo first, and then, weirdly, Leipzig or Auschwitz later. It's just the way of British society. It's the way it's structured. And it's my fault. Just the, way, sorry, it's the way of war gamers is they always want what you haven't got. So we've given you all, through all this stuff, but you want Leipzig. Yeah. So yes, of course we will get to it. Yeah. Uh, two thirds. What kind of Englishman are you? <laughs> Oh, you're yeah, that sort, huh? It's got yeah. a touch of the Belgian in him, I think. Yeah. 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 Very worrying. Take his name, Sergeant. Yeah. He's in the book.